Granulosa cell tumor, Wikipedia audio. Granulosa cell tumors are tumors that arise from granulosa cells. These tumors are part of the sex cord gonadal stromal tumor or non epithelial group of tumors. Although granulosa cells normally occur only in the ovary, granulosa cell tumors occur in both ovaries and testicles. These tumors should be considered malignant and treated in the same way as other malignant tumors of ovary. The ovarian disease has two forms, juvenile and adult, both characterized by indolent growth, and therefore has high recovery rates. The staging system for these tumors is the same as for epithelial tumors and most present as stage I. The peak age at which they occur is 50-55 years, but they may occur at any age. Juvenile granulosa cell tumor is a similar but distinct rare tumor. It too occurs in both the ovary and testis. In the testis it is extremely rare, and has not been reported to be malignant. Although this tumor usually occurs in children, it has been reported in adults. Estrogens are produced by functioning tumors and the clinical presentation depends on the patient's age and sex. Clinical Presentation Using next-generation DNA sequencing, it was discovered that 97% of granulosa cell tumors contain an identical mutation in the FOXL2 gene. This is a somatic mutation meaning it is not usually transmitted to descendants. Mutation C.402CG in the sequence of FOXL2 leads to the amino acid substitution P.C134W. It is believed that this mutation may be the cause of granulosa cell tumors. Two recent studies show that AKT1 is involved in juvenile granulosa cell tumors. In frame duplications in the plextrin homology domain of the protein were found in more than 60% of JGCTs occurring in girls under 15 years of age. Interestingly, the JGCTs without duplications carried point mutations affecting highly conserved residues. The mutated proteins carrying the duplications displayed a non-wild type subcellular distribution with the marked enrichment at the plasma membrane. This led to a striking degree of AKT1 activation demonstrated by a strong phosphorylation level and corroborated by reporter assays. Female, if the patient is postmenopausal, she usually presents with abnormal uterine bleeding, and in some cases hemoperitoneum, if the patient is of reproductive age she would present with monometraragia. However, in some cases she may stop ovulating altogether, if the patient has not undergone puberty, early onset of puberty may be seen, these tumors tend to have late recurrences. Analysis by RNA-seq pinpointed a series of differentially expressed genes, involved in cytokine and hormone signaling and cell division-related processes. Further analyses pointed to a possible dedifferentiation process and suggested that most of the transcriptomic dysregulations might be mediated by a limited set of transcription factors perturbed by AKT1 activation. These results incriminate somatic mutations of AKT1 as major probably driver events in the pathogenesis of JGCTs. Tumors vary in size, from tiny spots to large masses, with an average of 10 cm in diameter. Tumors are oval and soft in consistency. On cut section, histology reveals reticular trabecular areas with interstitial hemorrhage and collexner bodies small cyst-like spaces interspersed within a graphene follicle. Inhibin, a hormone, has been used as tumor marker for granulosa cell tumor. In the ovaries of aging squirrel monkeys, clusters of granulosa cells occur that resemble granulosa cell tumors in humans. 
These appear to be a normal change with age in this species. Photo of Tumor, Granulosa Cell Tumor Research Foundation Genetics AGCT JGCT Diagnosis Gross Appearance Tumor Marker Treatment Granulosa cell clusters in other species.